Hey everybody, Sandy here, aka Montulio, and we are back for another Vintage League. It has been quite some time. I've been away for the game for really quite a number of months. I have gotten into one or two weekend challenges here and there. Uh, that said, I think overall, um, I still have a pretty decent pulse on the on the meta game. Uh, there has been some new releases since I last played, though, with uh, Dominar United coming out and. Um, yeah, that said, we're, we're going to take this deck for a spin today. This is No Props' most recent um, bizarre deck. It is skewing Blood Gas and Hogax here, and the the mana base has changed quite a bit to feature four Besejus and four uh, Yavamaya Cradle of Gross, uh, as well as some Serum Powders in the deck. So... Uh, I, I don't, at first glance, like it as much as the previous uh, Hokak builds, but we're going to see. I'm going to trust in, in no props that they know what they're doing. They've done well with the deck, and uh, it actually runs four main deck collectors as well, so I can see that being somewhat alluring. Uh, that said, let's take it in. We are cold, and we'll see how we do. Now, how do we like this hand here? It's We are on the draw. We don't have a lot going on. We do have bazaars. But to powder away double bizarre just doesn't feel correct to me. So I think we're going to hold this. I have played with Yavimaya Cradle of Growth quite a bit since the card has been released, where I bring it in for a couple leagues and I always end up cutting it. Uh, one of the things that it's kind of a love hate relationship because one of the things that I really like about it is that making your bizarre top for mana is huge. Huge game, especially in the presence of things like Tabernacle as main hate for Bazaar decks. I really do like that being able to pump up Root Wallows with your Bazaar is awesome. But of course, that's a double edged sword because quite often you're giving your opponent mana to to work with as well. Uh, the main thing that I have not liked about it over its tenure is that uh, giving a Deathrite Shaman a green mana to use against your deck can be problematic, uh, amongst other things, but we're going to see how it does today, though. So what are we up against here? What variant of Bazaar? I think if this is Dredge, we're probably in trouble. Okay, so they did hit a Dredger and a Stinkweed Imp, so uh, likely could be in some trouble here. So we are going to Wasteland their Bazaar and hope that we're able to slow them down enough to be able to get into this game. This feels like a Revival. Yep. So I don't really think we can win from here. I'm going to concede and hide the information all they have seen from me thus far is a wasteland like to be clear is there a chance that we could have won from there yes it's possible but i think it's improbable that we would have been able to pull it off so what do we want here i think cradle's probably unnecessary against dredge I don't think Loam is where we want to be. I guess really what I'm looking at here are Noxious Revivals. And I think we can support them. Like, Collector Roof is a pretty bad card. Like, these do mess with our opponent's side as well. See... Here's an example, like, yes, it's improbable that my opponent is going to be able to hard cast a Force of Vigor, but just giving them the mana to be able to tap their bazaars for colored mana is suboptimal for sure. Like, I don't know. It's It has probably been several months since I've actually tapped a, a Yavamaya Cradle, but... As you can see here, I am, I am only running three Bosejus to their four. Uh, there 
is two reasons for that. One, I do not own a third Basaju and they're about 45 bucks. I don't really want to spend the money on an extra Basaju because I think the likelihood of outside of this deck me ever playing for is very small. In addition to that, I actually think because this is basically a mono green build, I think Cradle fits into the deck very nicely and helps with our Tabernacle problem. You know, it's the best card in our deck against Tabernacle flat out. So we got 63 cards here. What do we want to cut? I can see cutting a Blazing Root Walla. I can also see cutting a Cradle. Maybe I can cut a couple Cradles here. Maybe I do just bring it along. Maybe a little bit on the cute side of things, but. Like, I don't feel like I'm going to need to have four. Uh, Revival's not bad, though, against them. A little bit of a panic play there. I got time got away from me. There was jammering away a little bit much. Let's hope our sideboard worked. Yes, it did. We won the die roll. I think I'd like to keep this hand. This looks really good. We'll keep that. Unfortunately for us, we don't have a green land as we currently stand, but let's see what we can find here. Are we going to force a will that? Yep, okay, I can live with that. Um, I mean, yeah, we're going to Bizarre. One, two, hmm. bit of a difficult decision there but this is good against noxious revival specifically but because we have a ley line in play i don't think it's as probable that the noxious revival is going to be relevant because of the ley line like when i wasteland this the hope is that it's going to go to the graveyard okay hollow one is good I have three cards in hand. All right. Let's see what we can do. Okay. We can live with that. All right. So, look. If they have a Force of Vigor here, it's not ideal to discard Surgical, but I think it's fine. Let's get rid of that guy there. Another Bizarre, okay. See what they got here. Do I want to besage you here? I think I do. Well, they 
were just f6. Okay. So it's possible we just lose to this hollow one here. My opponent does have three cards in hand, so. I think I'm going to play out the mocks here. And here's the reason why. is because I'm going to start spinning my bizarre. I'm going to spin it in the, their, during their attack phase. And I'm also going to spin during my upkeep. So I'm getting... A look at four cards to see if I can find root wallace, and then uh, I will take a natural draw. So that's my plan here. And force of vigor is a, is still a real possibility here. Yep. Okay. This is fine. But I mean, obviously not optimal. But I mean, if they have another bazaar, uh, they've got to find three bazaars out of the top twenty cards. It's good for them. I'm going to spin here and see what I can find. Okay, did not find what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go down to 8. I'm going to spin again. We did find a root wall of this time. And that's not bad. So what I can do now is I can actually double block and kill this. If I so choose. And I, I probably, I mean, I don't really want to lose the death right at this stage in the game. Maybe, maybe I can take a turn off from that to keep it around to see if I can find another root walla to to trade off with. That might be the better line. They did not attack into it, which is great news for me. Just gain a couple life here. We're not going to spin in the upkeep this time. Um, I'm going to go again here. Why not? So, I think we made a good decision there, not blocking with the death right should they have attacked last turn, because we did find a root walla. So this, yeah, okay, my opponent's going to force here. I just don't think that's a good force of will from them. Because I, I guess, yes, we could have tacked in with the hollow one, but they still would have had the option to block with it. So I, I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I guess by them being proactive on their force there, it does prevent me from attacking. So it's not the worst. Oh, wow. Nice. Okay. Rip a strip mine off the top, eh, you stinker? Okay, so I, we're just going to continue to gain them life while we can here. This deck does not have black mana in it, outside of the uh, Deathrite Shamans and uh, Mox. So my opponent's line is looking much better here at the moment uh, for that Force of Will on my Hollow one. I think if I was able to drain them here continually every turn, it would be a lot better, but this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to start cycling. Yeah, Maya. Okay. Legendary land, as you can see, we can't really do anything there. We are in a holding pattern. But sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Um, next turn I can hard cast a vine.
Hmm. This is risky doing this though. Because if they if they're just sitting on another wasteland, like I think they would have used it because of the death rate. Me just gaining life with the, my death rate, but maybe not. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a chance here because I can actually hard cast this root walla if need be, and next turn I can spin my bazaar and see if I can hit another creature. It's a little bit risky, but I think it's worth it. They do not want to eat my Benjamin. Okay, so. Is there any creature that I can bring back to my hand? I guess that's one of the problems with eating the creatures out of my graveyard is that I'm not really able to animate anything. Gonna go anyways. So this is gonna bring my Benjamin back and is going to allow me to attack. Yeah, they conceded. All right. Well, Yavamaya Cradle of Growth looks pretty damn good there, didn't it? I mean, allowed me to tap my bazaar to use the Besages. Okay, let's see how we do here. Let's try and be a little bit better on our time this time. <sighs> now, we are on the draw. Now, I, I think once upon a time is decent. Like in that particular instance, Life of the Loam would have been fine had we found it. Just go with what we had. Thank you for an excuse me. And a once upon a time, a death rate shaman. I think we can gamble with this hand. Once again, it, in similar style of Hogak Vine decks that produce mana, you are not reliant of, on Bazaar like decks like Dredge and Hollow Vine builds because you have another side of your game, and this is an example of that. Now, one of the uh, problems with this hand is that Force of Vigor can really blow Mox and Leyline of the Void out of the water. That's that's the main challenge that I see with this, where we're, where it could be suboptimal. But um, I am going to do this now. Oh my goodness gracious me! A, a vine? That's terrible. That could be the worst once upon a time I've ever had, and I've literally cast that card many hundreds of times. So because there's a double ley line hand here, my opponent has one and I have one, Death Rite Shaman is looking very poor. But that could change with Force of Vigor. I'm going to wait a turn here. I, I, I value my mocks that much that if they actually have the force of vigor here, me losing my mocks is a problem. No, it's a push and pull situation because I'll, I'll wish it was in play last turn or for the following turn. But So we played around that well. My opponent has no cards in hand, and if they miss here, I feel like we're stable. We do have a Noxious Revival to buy us some time. Okay, that was fantastic.
Just have to hope it's not a noxious or live one in their hand. Okay, we got the concession there. So, I think we played that last, this last game fairly well. They did actually have the Force of Vigor, and we played around it by not exposing our mocks and our death right. Uh, we also drew a Wasteland, which really was the key to this. But uh, we, we played to our best out, and we were able to get a win there. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Feel free to leave any comments, and we will see you guys for round two.